And after reading all the things that I've been reading about the Eagles today, I am even dumber than I was this morning. That's right. It is getting harder and harder to calculate the calculations of the cornbread because I can't do math and I can't remember numbers. I'm getting really dumb. And I'm already dumb. But that's just the way it is. Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Man, it is Thursday, Thursday already. We got three games left to the NFL season where only one team will be, where only one team's going to be happy. And everybody else is going to be left wondering what the hell they can do to get themselves a Super Bowl. The Eagles have made mistakes, and it hasn't stopped them from trying to fix them. They ended up having what's almost comical to me is they looked at it and they said that because we lost Kellen Moore that our offense was going to suffer. But nobody thought twice about the Eagles moving on from their um coordinators and it turned out their coordinators were definitely a problem it looks like Vic Fangio is going to be hired as the Eagles defensive coordinator um, a guy that you can look and say has been an architect of a guy who's been able to stop Mike McCarthy as well as the Dallas uh, excuse me as well as Dak Prescott and so you look at this and say this is a move to definitely try and counter the Dallas Cowboys offense. Say what you will, Eagle fans. You know, one thing that you cannot dispute is when it comes to the NFC East, that Dak Prescott is the king of the NFC East. You've had quarterbacks come and go. You've had coaches come and go. But the thing that is still relevant is that the Dallas Cowboys and Dak Prescott have been able to run rough shot in their division. If they can ever build beyond just the division, they could be something. Last night, um, me and my buddy, Game Time Brian, uh, sat down for a, about a half hour live stream, not live stream, excuse me, uh, video. It's actually already up on his channel right now, and I'll have, the, have it up on my channel in a bit too. But we were going through the doom and gloom scenario that is Stephen Jones basically is given the keys to the Dallas Cowboys. And you wonder what the future is going to look like it's basically what you're seeing now risk aversion cap uh satisfaction of making sure we don't get anywhere close to it making up for mistakes by um restructuring contracts over and over overpaying players for one years or signing players to team-friendly contracts coming back from in, from injuries, but not using free agency as the thing to get you over the hump. The thing, uh, and the thing that I wonder right now as the Eagles are continually trying to improve and whether or not, that then not every move works out, but as the Eagles are trying to improve and things, we know that Dan Quinn, after two other prospects have already done their second interview he is up today for the Seattle job you've heard rumors that it would be a package deal with him and Chip Kelly being the offensive coordinator him being the head coach and so on and taking care of the defense that it sounds like he's already out the door the question that you have to ask is have the Cowboys already come up with a plan b if Dan Quinn does not come back, is that going to be trying to hire Joe Witt where we've heard rumors that Joe Witt may be going to Seattle with Dan Quinn? Is it that Joe Witt is going to be offered the uh, defensive coordinator position or is it that we're going to look and say, you know what, we're going to take a chance on Al Harris, who's done a fantastic job. Now, understand that there have been um, people who have been have become head coaches and done really, really well without being coordinators and things. Um, so it may end up being that you look and say, maybe he's ready. I, I can't tell you. I can't tell you how much of this is Dan Quinn and how much Al Harris knows that you got to be a fly on the wall with the Dallas Cowboys organization and figure that one out. But if they haven't, and this is my biggest problem with the Dallas Cowboys is they always seem – to be reactionary instead of being aggressive. 
They're always waiting for something to happen and respond to it instead of being proactive and trying to take care of a problem before it becomes a problem. Um, case in point would be, uh, for example, Tyron Smith. We all know that Tyron Smith, when he plays, is one of the best out there. But you have to have a plan in place for when he's not going to be there. You can point back to the 2017 season when he first went out and really missed time when we had a chance to make the playoffs, and we dropped down to a Chaz Green. And Chaz Green and that offense gave up eight sacks. Claiborne, literally, uh, basically a journeyman, got paid because of that one game and got a fat contract with the Cleveland Browns. But here we are. I'm betting that the Dallas Cowboys bring back Tyron Smith again on another team-friendly deal with no succession plan in place. For me, Tyler Smith is your left guard. You don't want to fuck with that. Excuse my language. You don't want to mess with that situation. He has been that good. And that's one of the problems with the Cowboys. We'll just reshuffle people, you know, a, a guard's a tackle, a tackle's a guard. You know, a one technique is a is a defensive tackle and a defensive end is a defensive tackle so he can also play one technique. That brought us situations like Tyrone Crawford. He does the dirty work because he can play defensive end and he can play tackle. And that's great because you're paying one guy who can kind of do two roles. He does them okay but you don't get elite performance on either position. Too slow, really, to be an effective defensive end, too light to be an effective defensive tackle. And you pay that guy a boatload of money, and the last two seasons that he was here were really not very good. And this in lies the problem with the Dallas Cowboys. They hold on to players too long. Instead of saying, what can I get for this player now? for the future. Instead, they basically wait till they're worthless, overpaid, and then let them go. And then they're stuck paying more money. Say what you will about other teams that end up trading players and making moves and stuff. <sighs> Considering that it's us and the Washington Commanders that have not been to the NFC Championship since 1995, maybe you might want to look at some of these other teams and what they're doing. So we'll see what we hear from Atlanta, excuse me, not from Atlanta, from uh, Seattle with Dan Quinn. The reason I got Atlanta on my mind is because now we're getting all of the, it's a silly season now in the off season. And this is where you're hearing, of course, great ideas that really just can't happen. You know, they always come up with all kinds of great scenarios. I remember the last time Dak Prescott had his contract up, you had people like Colin Cowherd that said, you know what, the Dallas Cowboys should let Dak Prescott walk and they should trade for Derek Carr. How's Derek Carr been playing? That was when he was with the Raiders. Oh, excuse me. Yeah. Or, yeah, with the Raiders. How's he been playing in that time? Can't say he didn't have help around him. He had Josh Jacobs. He They, they went out and they got Devontae Adams. And, um, yeah. Then he was supposed to be the savior in New Orleans. How do you do in New Orleans? But these are the ideas that you've heard. You've heard, of course, you know, that Carson Wentz is so much better than Dak Prescott, that he's a Ferrari, or excuse me, a Maserati, and Dak Prescott's just a Corvette. So we have a new one now. With the drama that's going on in Dallas, we heard that the Cowboys should try and trade with the Chicago Bears and that Dak Prescott would be willing to go to Chicago for Justin Fields. Today's is Dak should demand a trade to the Falcons. Let's go to the tape on this one. 
for those of you who've not been with us this week. Social media after the loss, the heartbreaking loss a week and a half ago. C.D. Lamb's mother on Facebook said that she wished her son, C.D. Lamb, would be traded and added, quote, Dak isn't it, in all capitals, with a bunch of exclamation points. Dak's brother, Tad, chimed in over the weekend. He posted on X, Cowboys fans who continue to DM me, trust me, if I could get Dak to leave Dallas, I would. And then there's Micah Parsons' brother, Terrence, who said that Dak needs to take a team-friendly deal. He's got his hands in Dak's pockets. He posted Dak should, quote, take $40 million or pack your bags. Now, Micah Parsons did respond to that, though he didn't mention Dak specifically. He said any comments made by Terrence Parsons Jr. are his and his alone. As you know, if I have something to say, I'm not afraid to say it. I love my team. My brother's on my team in the city of Dallas, and I'm more committed than ever to bring a championship to the greatest fan base on earth. Again, he doesn't mention Dak specifically. And Jeff Saturday yesterday here was fired up. Did freaking Jerry Jones hasn't come out and said, this is my guy, this is our guy. We're going to build around this. This is how we do it. He just did it with Mike McCarthy. Yeah. He did it with a freaking coach that everybody's trying to run out of town, and he doesn't do it for a quarterback that's been there for freaking 10 years, bro. It's absolutely absurd. So he's talking about Jerry Jones, and I would add, we've not heard any. Uh, Micah Parsons sort of disassociated himself from what his brother said, but he didn't specifically defend Dak Prescott. No one has. This is, and, and we're still waiting. I mean, I just keep counting the days. We talked about this Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Today is Thursday. Pl ample opportunity for someone in that team, whether it is upstairs in the front office or downstairs from that locker room, to defend the quarterback, and no one has. What does that mean? I think that means that there are a lot more questions in Dallas that, that have to be answered in the way of leadership. And I don't know how that gets better with Mike McCarthy going into the season as a lame duck coach, and especially when you consider the offseason that the Dallas Cowboys have to have when you're going to pay Micah Parsons, C.D. Lamb, and Dak Prescott at the top of their positions. I mean, Dak might be the highest paid player in NFL history. So I, I guess when I'm looking at this situation, knowing how much swing those players are going to have once we start talking about the contracts that Jerry's going to have to dole out, mm -hmm. I think the noise is only going to get louder. Their, 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 fam their, their families, those conversations that they're having in private, that stuff is bubbling up to the surface now on social media, and I don't know how those players walk that back, and so I only think that it's going to breed more tension as we move forward in Dallas. They, they better squash this, both privately and publicly. Mm -hmm. They got to do something. One, they got to figure out where it came from. We got to figure out who is just, you know, why is it okay for family members to speak negatively on teammates? Is it like, hey, you guys stay off social media. Don't comment about our teens on social media. This is going to fracture relationships in that building. If it's not squashed, it'll fracture the locker room. If it's not squashed, it'll fracture leadership roles. If it's not squashed. Here's my thing. I, I said this the other day. <clears throat> you um, one thought might be is it gets me my five minutes of fame, too. There's an uh, old saying that there's no such thing as bad publicity. Just saying. I mean, you could look at some of the things that uh, um, Pat Mahomes' brother has done there in social media to get his fame and so forth. In comparison, this has got a mild, but be that as it may. You could say what you want about Dak on the field. I obviously have had my opinion about him as a player. He doesn't deserve this. Mm -mm. He no. doesn't deserve this. And if we just, as an organization, just continue to – what other quarterback does this get, like, said about? Kirk Cousins and Dak are, I guess, arguably the same type of player, whatever fan base. This would never happen with Kirk Cousins. Mm. Never happen with Kirk Cousins. No one would say this about him. And the organization certainly wouldn't allow it. I, I'm struggling to understand. Let's, let's, no not, let's way. not go – I can see you reacting yeah. to that, but let's not go there mm -hmm. because it doesn't really matter. Kirk Cousins is a whole other thing. Dak is – why is it that this is basically being, I don't want to Slept say. Slept under the rug. Well, I mean, my I, point I, I is no one is I saying it. I don't think it's cool at all, though. I, I really What's don't. What's cool, not cool? I don't think family members saying what they're saying about the quarterback position. Of Dak course Prescott not. is cool at all. Right. And, and I think at some point, when I look at C.D. Lamb, I'll start with him. You just had over 1,700 yards and 12 touchdowns with this guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, you, literally, you he just made you just a guy who's going to become the highest paid Michael receiver. Irvin for the most receiving yards in Dallas Cowboy franchise history with Dak Prescott throwing you the football, right? And also, when I look at Michael Parsons and his brother, like, it, it's just, it bothers me that, like you mentioned, Grady, that no one in that locker room is saying, hey, man, this is my quarterback. We, we rocking with him. We, we, we good. Think, think Even if it's not true. 
<laughs> somebody right, got it, 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 even if it's not true. Yeah. They need to somebody got to come Remember step up. Remember T.O. in the press conference? <laughs> Romo is my quarterback. Or his quarterback. Where is someone getting up and saying that's my quarterback so, and crying at the podium? What's interesting is that it's not happening in Dallas. But you saw all season a lot of people were criticizing Brock Purdy. You saw Debo Samuel. You saw Fred, Fred Warner. You saw a lot of 49ers coming to the defense of their quarterback. And you also saw, even recently, the Bucks, where C.J. Gardner-Johnson says, you know what, this Tampa team, they, they might be pretty good if they had a good quarterback. Right. And guys on the Bucks were like, hey, hey, Baker's our dude. Like, we'll ride with Baker. And you don't see that. And Dak has been there so long. And I think, honestly, this stems from when he first was trying to get paid. And Jerry kind of dragged his feet. And I think there have just been questions. Yes, he did get paid initially, but I just never felt like in Buffalo, Whatever you feel about Josh Allen, they ride with 17, like, until the wheels fall yeah. off. And they made it sure, this is our guy. This is who we're paying. Eventually, you get sick of it, though. Like, eventually. I wish Dak would go somewhere else. As a player, for sure. <laughs> eventually, you get sick and tired of it. I've gotten my money. I'm appreciative of that. Cool. All that's part of it. Like, eventually, you get sick and tired of it. And you say, fine, <laughs> if you don't want me, I'll, I'll go somewhere else. To get rid of. He has a no trade clause, I think, and I know. No, no thing. And let me tell you exactly what yeah. he has. He, he has, has leverage that no other player in the history of the, of the National Football League has had. Mm -hmm. He has a fifty-nine and a half million dollar cap number for right. next year. He has a no trade clause, and he has a can't tag me clause. So he can one hundred percent control what happens from here. And to your point, he has been the adult in the room, um, however well or poorly he has played, from the minute he got yeah, there through all of the nonsense that mm -hmm. happens there. From from the from the Micah Parsons side of. It. First of all, he's got something to say about literally everything. everything all the rest of the time. And it was their defense that got humiliated and exposed in that playoff loss a hell of a lot more than Dak Prescott whoa, did. Whoa, whoa, I'm not going to I mean, that far. I mean, Dak, Dak threw an interception, gifted him a point blank touchdown. And then both, he both parts, and then he they both suck. Yeah, they, 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 they weren't good. Listen to me. I mean, that I, wasn't good. I, I just turned around. Green Bay just scored again. <laughs> yeah, they just ran for yeah, they, 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 they were both bad. But I guess the whole point is I can't get the optic of what C.D. Lamb did on the first drive out of my head and I'm not going to dismiss all of the criticism coming from in that locker room toward yeah. Dak Prescott yeah. there's something there like usually when an organization and a player at odds that's one thing but when players and players families are taking shots at Dak that is telling in terms of their respect level for that quarterback so what does it mean? for whatever reason. What does it mean? What, what I mean, the reason? What, what, it, what it means is that they don't have leadership within the organization. What it means well, is that the players are taking their cues from the owner in terms of them and their families taking shots at whoever they want to. Mm. And it's not going to lead to the Dallas Cowboys accomplishing their ultimate goal, which is trying to win a championship. Think about it in this regard. What other, so we just watched those two be the best quarterback wide receiver duo in the NFL this year. Him and C.D. Lamb, yeah. arguably. Tyreek Hill, complete opposite of how he talks or anybody in, re in relation to Tua Tonga Vailoa. Um, Justin Jefferson praises Kirk Cousins. Puka Nakua and Cooper Cup rave about Matthew Stafford. I'm trying to think, you know, Nico Collins lauds over C.J. Stroud. Yeah. OBJ about Lamar. Mm -hmm. We just watched this guy's family speaking very publicly negatively about the quarterback and, and, say, and nothing's been done in that same post she said i wish he could go to houston because cj stroud is awesome <laughs> yeah I, but he, he, we all we, we can all agree that a family member saying something negatively about that player is bad the fact that the organization hasn't done that's anything, the bigger issue a, a, a teammate a a coach the owner, somebody hasn't come out and publicly said, hey, we're going to handle that internally. Dak Prescott is our guy, and he's the, he's the reason How why. How do you handle a family school. member? That's a problem. And until they squash it privately and publicly, it will remain a lingering problem. I agree. The family members can say whatever they want to say. They're, they're, they're individuals. They can do whatever they want. Mm -hmm. Someone needs to stand up there and say, Dak is our guy. And the fact, to your point, that they haven't suggests not everyone believes it. They can't walk that back. They can't walk that back. I hear what Dan is saying. They got to try and squash uh, no, it, though. They, they, they got to try, but you can't walk that back. You can't walk that back. No, I, don't, so, I, I disagree. So CD Lamb's relationship with Dak, you think, is broken. Well, it's not just CD Lamb's, though. That's what everybody's focused. It's, it's like everybody's focusing on CD Lamb. This is Terrence Parsons, Michael Parsons' brother, coming out and saying something too. Right. Like those are the two but best players on the team, aside from the quarterback. You got Dak's people saying that we wish. Trust me, if. If, if he can go, we wish he can go. go. Right. So you have three different parties 
playing a part in this whole ordeal that we're talking but about. But that's right the now. problem, though, when you have a lame duck coach in Mike McCarthy that is not displayed the leadership, especially in the moments that it matters most for this team. Dak to Atlanta, who says no. Jeff brought it up yesterday. Dak to Atlanta with Bill Belichick as the coach, who says no. Hey, after what I witnessed the last two years with the Atlanta Falcons, their quarterback <laughs> situation, bring I'd Dak like to, and I'd his like, ass right on down I'd there. like to Please. see Dak somewhere else. <laughs> It's almost like the Mike Tomlin thing. Part of me wishes Mike Tomlin would go somewhere else so Steelers fans who want him fired could see what life without him would be like. I wonder how life would be like, what life would be like if Dak was somewhere else. How would he thrive? Could the Dallas Cowboys thrive without him? Trying to read Dan's face. I would want to know who's the offensive coordinator in Atlanta. It, it would be the best quarterback Atlanta's had since Matt. Josh yeah. McDaniel. Dio. <coughs> Send him to Atlanta, and Atlanta can year, win that division. And last year, at the quarterback position in Atlanta, Dad, we will welcome you with open arms. Yeah. I, I have to let uh, Chris get back to radio. I'm sportsmanlike ESPN Radio every weekday morning, coast to coast. Thank All you. right. There you have it. Dak to Atlanta. Um, and did you hear what they said? Man, Dak to Atlanta, welcome him with open arms. We'd win the division. Wow. Okay. There you have it. It is that time of year. We're going to hear Dak Prescott to all kinds of places. The Dak's got, you know, the, I'm sure the uh, trade Dak um, trolls will be here. Dak sucks. Dak's not the one and all that. It's just sad. The man has literally given you everything, everything, and still gets trashed. Well, it is what it is, but I guess at least he can take it to the bank. I'm Mark Holmes, and as always, I appreciate you guys, and I will see you soon.